Hi, it's Glenn and Austin with Eberly Stock. We're just going to give you a quick introduction to how to fit an Eberly Stock pack and to get the best uh, performance out of a load-bearing pack. There are just, we're going to keep it really simple because it should be. Um, there just are a few things to, to take note of. The first is that we always want to use the waist belt on a pack, and it always wants to be, you always want to start with that and put it in the, in the correct place. And then secondly, the fit of the harness on an adjustable harness pack is important. Um, but not as important as the tension that we put into the load, load lifters and the use of the sternum strap. So between the load lifters, placement of the harness, sternum strap, and most importantly the waist belt, you're going to get the best uh, fit and feel with the pack and the best performance when it's got a load in it. So with a load bearing pack, putting the hip belt in the right place is fairly simple and it should always be the same regardless of the scale, the vertical scale of the pack. So we're going to talk about something called the iliac crest, which is the top of the crest of your hip bones that you can feel when you put your hands right here on the top of your hip bones. And that is going to be the thing that you want the bulk of the load of the pack to be riding on because it keeps clear of all the driving stuff in your legs that's going to move you along and puts the weight of the pack closest to the uh, below your center of gravity and closest to where it kind of needs to be to, to carry a load comfortably. So in Austin's case, he's got the V90 Battleship pack on. It's got this nice generous belt, but his iliac crest is right in the center of that belt. And that's what you want to always target is you want to embrace the top of the iliac crest with about the midpoint on the belt and, and then tighten it so that it wraps kind of over the top of it. And that, that cupping uh, sensation that you're going to get when the belt's tightened over the top of the iliac crest is what's going to hold the pack in place nice and comfortably and firmly. So going from the V90 to the X2, which is a much shorter pack and purposely designed to ride below the level of your shoulders, we still start with the hip belt in the same place. So the midpoint is right over the top of Austin's iliac crest and, and if we load a lot of weight into this pack, it's going to still feel proper and comfortable in the, um, because it's in the right place. So now we're going to just walk you through what to do when you get a pack, brand new, take it out of the bag, and put it on. So the first thing is, as we said, we're going to start with the waist belt, uh, center it on the iliac crest, and snap it and tighten it up. That gives us the baseline for the placement of the pack. The next thing is just to tension, that, and, and we're doing this, we started with it all, everything loose, so now the next thing would be to tension the shoulder harness to make it just generally comfortable. The, the places where people run into trouble with packs, um, is often just by over tightening things. So if you do tighten things too much and after a while you go, gosh, it's so, I'm sore, it's because you actually are putting too much pressure from the harness on, your, on yourself. You just want to wear things comfortably and with just enough tension to keep the pack vertical on your back and the weight of the pack um, le driving the, weight, uh, the load into your uh, hips through the iliac crest. Okay, so waist belt's in place. The next thing is the harness. The, the third thing I would do would be the chest uh, sternum strap. Where you place this is just a matter of personal comfort. Elevate, uh, you know, probably just above the midline of your of your pecs, and and you'll draw it in and out, uh, and probably vary it a little bit during the course of the day. But this is a good place to start, just to put the harness inward um, from its natural resting place. Okay. Then the last thing is um, the load lifters, and Austin's just going to pull those enough to put some tension on them, but not so much that he's putting pressure on the front of the shoulder harness. So as we're looking at it. With an Eberly stock harness, we have these D-rings that usually want to end up on the kind of the midline of the top of your shoulder. And then this pack is a F65. It came out of the bag with the ladder on its adjustable, or the harness on the adjustable ladder in just about the right place for us. And you can see that there's very little gap here. So here's what it looks like if your new pack is, has the harness too high. You have this gap between the back of your shoulder and the top of the pack. Good indicator that it's just you need, you need to move the harness down on the ladder a couple rungs. So here's what it looks like if the harness is too low on the ladder. The D rings are after the top of his shoulders, and he, he has some, some pressure points in the back where it's just not feeling right. So we're going to bring the uh, harness up the ladder to rotate the shoulder harness over the front to its proper position. Once you've identified where you want the harness on the ladder, it's really easy to move it. It works best to put the upper strap into the rung first and then skip two rungs before you put the lower strap in. So there's, there's basically the harness is spanning two middle rungs. So if you want to get a little more technical, it's really easy to measure your torso length if you have a partner. And then we'll show you how to translate that to where to start the pack on the ladder rung. So Austin is going to put his hands onto the top of his hip bones, his iliac crest, with his thumbs pointing inward. That 
they, if you draw a line between where the thumbs are, that comes to a point on your back, and then you start from there to a point up on your neck, one of your vertebrae sticks out more than the others. So you just find that lump on the back of, of your neck or have your partner do so, and then run the tape measure from that center point of the thumbs to the lumbar that sticks out, or to the vertebrae that sticks out more up there. And in Austin's case, we find that he has a 19 inch torso. So this is really cool. We just, we know that Austin has a 19 inch torso. This pack is set up perfectly for him. Check this out. From the bottom of the lumbar at the bottom of the pack to the top of the harness is 19 inches. So it's very simple to measure your torso length and then put the ladder into the right spot on the pack by going, matching those two numbers. If the standard harness and belt don't fit you right, or if you want more padding, we do have a lot of accessories that are either longer belts or uh, thicker padded harnesses or longer harnesses, so you can customize the pack to fit you. So the way the pack rides and feels on your body is super important. It, it's going to make all the difference for whether you have a good experience in the field or not. Everly Stock's been really successful at making a fairly universal and fairly simple adjustable system. And we have other packs like the X2 that fit a wide range of bodies, but worn properly with the hip belt in the right place. That little pack will fit well on a small person or a large person just by having the load always come to the same place. So that's really the principle that matters most is always have the hip belt in the right place, the harness moves or adjust uh, to make everything else comfortable. Um, these are just general guidelines, every pack fits everybody differently because our bodies are all different sizes and shapes. If you have any more questions, we just invite you to call us at Everly Stock and we'll walk you through your situation.